Mom to the Rescue, Milk of Magnesia. It's a classic demonstration, and the reason it's a classic demonstration is because it works, it's quick and easy to set up, it's inexpensive, and it can teach a variety of concepts. Oftentimes, teachers try to relegate one demonstration to one particular class. Milk of Magnesia is one that you can use in a variety of topics, and it can be used at a variety of different teaching levels. What I have is a stirring uh, uh, plate with a beaker of water. We've got a little bit of ice in it to slow the reaction process down, and we'll talk about that in a few moments more. And we're going to place into that some distilled water so that we've got about 800 milliliters of total uh, mixture in here. We're going to turn the stir plate on. And if this is the first time you've done a demonstration with the stir plate, that alone will probably captivate your students' attentions for the first five minutes with how does that work and what's going on. So that's a good reason to perhaps do this demonstration more than once is to get over the, the theatrics of how does that thing stir all by itself? That's pretty amazing. We want to turn this up so that we get a nice stir rate going. I think we're about there. To the ice and the distilled water, we're going to add approximately 25 milliliters of milk of magnesia. My graduated goggles will allow me to measure that very accurately. Yes, that was 23.95 milliliters, but that'll be very nice. And then what we're going to do at this point is we ask the students to make some observations. They hear noise because of the ice clinking around inside of there, and they begin to say things like, uh, it's white, good. Somebody will come up with the aspect that it's cloudy, that's great, and we'll work along with that. We're now going to add a little bit of universal indicator solution to that. If students have not worked with the universal indicator solution before, then you would want to review with them the colors that we have, and we have that here on the easel. And if we take a look at that, we see that the red-orange end of the universal indicator range is going to be the acid range, whereas the blue and purple region is going to be more into the basic range, and of course, neutral would be about seven. So then as we come back, we're going to add about five milliliters of universal indicator into this. The universal indicator is starting off green, and when we place that into the beaker, we notice a nice purple color that results. So the students could then make an observation that milk of magnesia must be a base. And you could talk a little bit about, of course, the antacid properties of milk of magnesia and why they would be taking that when they have an upset tummy. We'll now begin to add hydrochloric acid to the milk of magnesia. And as we add that, the hydrochloric acid, in a sense, st stimulates uh, stomach acid. While this is stronger than what stomach acid would be, it also allows the reaction to go faster and it um, allows the volume not to become so diluted as we work with this. So we've got a purple cloudy mixture that's swirling around with some ice in it. So we add a pipette full of hydrochloric acid and of course what we see is that we go to the pink side of the process. The students immediately note that we've gone into the acid range of this process. And as we look at it for a moment, The students would become a little impatient. They're going to say, is there anything happening? And all, all of a sudden, magic takes place. And the solution begins to turn colors again. That's quite captivating because they didn't expect that to happen. So now we come back to the process and we see that we've come into kind of a bluish teal kind of color. Guys have only eight basic colors. Girls, of course, can come in with lots of different colors that they would come up with there. So that's always a discussion. So we have a teal color, we're back into the base range. We'll add another dropper full of, of the hydrochloric acid. Again, we go back into the pinky orangey range, which is indicating that we've got an acid mixture that has taken place because of the hydrochloric acid that's been added. And the students once again want to know, is it gonna change back colors again like it did the first time? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. So we wait. And there it comes. It's like magic. And we come back to the teal and the blue side. And so we continue on with this process as we add acid. And I ask the students to continue to make observations about what's taking place. Well, we've obviously got, let's wipe off a little 
moisture on the outside here. We've obviously got the color changes that are taking place, but can we notice anything else that's occurring? And they might make note of the fact that it appears that the colors are slightly different at the beginning and end than what they were, and perhaps the changes are taking a little bit different time than what they were the first time around. So perhaps we're not quite as uh, intensive a blue-green or a teal color. Some student might begin to say, hey, I can see through that a little bit. I think it's not quite as cloudy as it was. I'd say, well, let's continue for just a moment and we'll see what happens. So we continue to add hydrochloric acid by the barrel pipette full. And some student will say, yeah, I can begin to see the star bar now. There really is something taking place in there. And then they begin to want to know, how long will this process happen? And we say, that's part of the experimentation process. We just have to see how long that's going to go. And is it going to change color again? Oh yeah, there it is one more time. But if we look at it, it's not quite as blue as it, what it was before. It's going a little bit more to the green side. And we'll try one more dropper full. And the students will say, yes, definitely. I can see through it now, even though there's moisture on the outside. This is definitely not the same thing that we started with. And so we'll begin to have a discussion about, well, what we started with was a suspension. And remember the properties of a suspension. They block light. They would settle if we let them set for a while. If you notice, I had to shake the bottle of milk and magnesia before I poured it in. The reason that I had to shake it before I poured it in was because it was a suspension. And so, of course, when we mix that into the water, it would also create a suspension. But now, we've come back to the point where the mixture is entirely clear. We have a solution now. And this solution is probably at its end point. It won't change anymore. The question that the students would ask is, can you make it go back the other way? Well, let's see if we can. We have a little bit of sodium hydroxide solution, and so we'll take and put a little bit of sodium hydroxide in. And we go back to that really pretty purple color that we started with, and then from that point, if we wanted to, we could go back through the process again. But yes, it's possible to reverse that. Now we'll stop the magnetic stir at this point, and we'll talk a little bit about where to use this and how to use this. This is a nice demonstration because it teaches a variety of chemistry concepts. Obviously, it's an acid-base reaction. With general students or even with biology type students, we can talk about what the effect is of milk of magnesia and what an antacid does and why it is that we take antacids. Most of the antacids that you would take would be mild types of bases that would be slowly dissolving. And that's why we use the milk of magnesia for that process. This reaction could also be used as a kinetics type experiment. You note that I've put ice in here to begin with, and the purpose of the ice was to slow this color change down. So if you want a very simple, inexpensive process that you could use to show some kinetics, set a couple of stirrers up, and you could have one at like ice, you could have one at room temperature, and you could have one at perhaps 30 or 35 degrees Celsius. And you could have students simultaneously adding the solutions in. And you could look at those color changes that are taking place. So that kinetic changes are in there would be a nice little piece, and it's a very simple way to show that. You could also use this as an example of limiting reactants. When the reaction starts off, it is a, a high concentration of magnesium hydroxide in there. And even though magnesium hydroxide has a very, very low solubility, it was definitely in an excess material. When I added the dropper full of hydrochloric acid in there, it changed to the acid form very quickly, but it caused a chemical reaction, an acid-base reaction, to take place inside of there. And that acid-base reaction neutralized any magnesium hydroxide that was dissolved, and it caused the insoluble magnesium hydroxide then to react. And then what was left over is that all of the acid was neutralized, and there was excess uh, magnesium hydroxide, milk of magnesia, left. So we have this concept of a limiting reactant. That's something that can sometimes be demonstrated with uh, vinegar and, and a baking soda. I've seen that done a number of different ways. Here's a different way to do that, and it has a little bit of color to go along with that as well. If you want to take this to a higher level, you can take this reaction and you can use it with your advanced classes as you begin to talk about KSPs. The solubility product constant of magnesium hydroxide is rather low. It's about 6 times 10 to the minus 12. And so with this 
very, very small KSP, we can talk about the equilibrium that would lie in here and what's taking place as we add the acids back and forth. And then um, this is, so, so what we have then is something that could be shown in biology or as an, in a general chemistry class. Then once the wow factor is gone, you could come back in with some of your advanced students. You'd be able to talk a little bit about the uh, kinetics part of the process, the acid-base theory that's going behind this. The following year, you could come back in with your APIB class or with an, a second year class that you might have, and you might take that with your KSP and your solubilities so that you could look at that process. So this is a demonstration that I think bears repeating more than once because there's excellent chemistry behind it. There's a nice visual impact to it, and it's something that the students can relate to. They understand and know something about that. So let mom rescue your chemistry teaching. Mom to the rescue. Thank you.